In February 2024, the Kremlin put dozens of officials from NATO and EU member states on the wanted list on charges of violating Russian laws in their own countries. Moscow has no right to detain or prosecute foreign nationals outside their own territory. According to analysts at the Institute of the Study of War, Russia is thus preparing the ground for future aggression against alliance states. Kremlin's attempt to enforce its federal laws over NATO officials for sanctions in their own countries effectively denies the sovereignty of these states and are part of Russian efforts to set informational conditions justifying possible Russian escalations against NATO states in the future, from a report of the Institute for the Study of War. The ambassadors of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania to the United Kingdom published a joint column in The Telegraph. They called on allies to show more resolve in responding to the challenges posed by Moscow. They also called for Ukraine to be admitted to NATO as soon as possible. The diplomats are convinced that this is in the interest of the alliance. We agree with intelligence estimates that the acute strategic challenge to our defense and deterrence could come in less than three years, perhaps sooner. With our location on the eastern shores of the Baltic Sea, we have few natural barriers and nowhere to retreat. As a battle-hardened ally, Ukraine will make a very significant contribution to our security. A clear path to Ukraine's membership should be a priority at the summit in Washington this summer, from a joint column by the Baltic ambassadors to the UK in the Telegraph. Putin has repeatedly stated that Russia is not going to attack NATO. However, Moscow's actions suggest otherwise, analysts say. When a dictator says he doesn't want something, it means it's something he wants badly. He recently said that it's nonsense and that he doesn't want to attack NATO. Hence, NATO must realize that he very much wants to and he will soon do it if they doesn't make serious steps forward and don't help Ukraine to the fullest. The Baltic states are already creating a defense line on the border with the Federation, and EU states are increasing funding for the defense industry. However, efforts by EU leaders to strengthen defense cooperation have stalled due to the fragmentation of the industry, according to the head of Germany's largest defense contractor, Rain Metal. Military budgets are controlled at the national level, and states want to retain control over strategic supply chains and technological advantages. The EU needs to create larger and more specialized defense groups. The head of the German arms concern is convinced. It does not make a lot of sense if we, say, pick the second or third best technology because one nation wants that for nationalistic reasons. That is the most difficult discussion they are having at government level. We need big companies in Europe. Armin Papperger, CEO of Rain Metal, in a comment to the Financial Times. It is no longer appropriate only to talk. It is no longer enough to only help Ukraine. We need to show our citizens that the defense budget should be adequate, that we should prepare for war even if no one wants to fight. This is not only an indicator to our own citizens, but also to the Kremlin. In response to the Russia's war against Ukraine, the European Commission is going to propose that the European Union switches to war economics regime, Reuters has reported. It is a matter of EU countries making more orders for armament from European companies. Earlier, according to Politico, the European Commissioner for Internal Market proposed to create an EU defense fund of 100 billion euros. Reported by Anastasia Tarnavska, Mikita Skoblikov, UATV News.